the recent developments in the neighboring Asia Republic have become a subject of international attention. And for Nigeria, this development is a matter of um, dire and urgent national interest and security. The Tinubu presidency have totally bungled an opportunity to take absolute charge and control of what is happening in our neighboring Niger uh, Republic. Because Tinubu happened to be the chairman of ECOWAS at the moment, he had all the chances to do the right thing, but he has been uh, bungling and the kind of knee-jerk approach to what is happening there. And Nigeria has become like a laughing stock of the world. Many people have been wondering what of Pitu be if he actually or if he was the president as at now, what will he have done? How would he have approached the situation? And that is what I am going to bring to you in this video. I mean, Niger is a hot button issue now in the uh, ECOWAS region, as well as various international um, countries and organizations that are, I mean, concerned with what is going on there. But regardless of the position taken by the various parties, we want to see what P2B have to say about it. And he took to his uh, ex or Twitter account of old and said that a total diplomatic resolution must take into consideration the real politic of the West African sub-region. So he said that he applauded the respective mediatory efforts by General Abdul Abu Salami Abubakar, His Eminence Muhammad Saad Abubakar, the Sultan of Sokoto, and His Royal Highness Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, whereas ECOWAS authorities have indicated that they remain open to various conflict resolution options. Diplomacy must remain the overarching imperative in resolving the present crisis. So for p it has to be dialogue. It has to be diplomacy. No question of wars, no question of shooting at this moment. He is totally out to say that it's something that we have to negotiate. Dialogue and the focus on the return to democracy in Niger Republic over a period of time. So he added that I join the many well-meaning Nigerians who have advocated that any intervention in the crisis should be preeminently through diplomatic dialogue among all strategic interests in the crisis. Dialogue, diplomas, uh, diplomatic dialogue, that is the position that P2B said should be focused on. So if he were the president right now, Nigeria would not have issued a threat of war. I hear some people ask, what of when Niger Republic says that they are not ready for dialogue? You are right in asking that question. And um, I will provide an answer to it before the end of this video. Just watch to the end and you will see why and the people refuse dialogue or what should be done, even when they say they are not ready for it. So we also said that it is therefore important that the people of Niger are allowed via their national institutions the opportunity to revert quickly to a representative democratic government. All national, regional, and international assistance should be extended to the people of Niger to return their country to normalcy. So it is an issue for the people of Niger. What ECOWAS and other international organizations can do is to put pressure on this government to give a timeline to return the country to democratic rule. It is not to go inside Niger 
and start shooting and killing their soldiers and killing civilians and damaging in structures, uh, infrastructure in order to return a president that has been removed from office. It doesn't happen in Africa. We cannot recall a situation where it happened. It was probably only in Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, where the French military, because of their entrenched interest, personally took part in removing uh, Laurent Gbagbo from government. But that one is also a cue and later installed uh, Ouattara, the man who is currently prodding um, Tinubu to go to war. During this uh, ECOWAS meeting in Nigeria at Abuja, he said that Cote d'Ivoire have taken a position that what ECOWAS is doing now, listen to the man, is the position of Ivory Coast, which means this man have decided that the junta in Niger must be removed and is trying to force down that on the throat of ECOWAS. Can you imagine Ivory Coast saying that they are ready to provide uh, about 10,000 soldiers immediately and they have the funds? Since when is Cote d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast, if you prefer that, become a military power and economic power in West Africa that they can easily raise an army like this and have the funds to sponsor them too? Where was Ivory Coast during the Ecomog years when Nigeria shouldered over 85% of the cost and provided over 80% of the military that took part in that operation, both in Sierra Leone and Liberia? Where was Ivory Coast? And today, Ivory Coast suddenly is on the scene, the first country to have the soldiers ready and have the money. Those doesn't it look like there's somebody who is playing the music for Ivory Coast and Ivory Coast is dancing it? Who do you think will provide Ivory Coast with the money to prosecute such a war, finance the deployment of 10,000 uh, Ivory Coast soldiers to Niger Republic? Who do you think will do that? And as far as we know, Watara is a puppet that was put in that position by France when they removed Laurent Babo. And even Laurent Babo was sent to the uh, criminal court in uh, Den Haag. Listen to this. Anybody that has been to that court in Den, in Den Haag doesn't actually come out. Taylor of Liberia is still in that court, it tried, jailed, and is seven. So many leaders from the uh, Eastern European side of uh, Serbia, whatever is it, Milo, uh, Milo, Milo, uh, Milosevic, uh, some of those people during those wars. But Laurent Bagbo was sent to Den Haag in this court. And after about three years, this court set the man free said there was no credible charge against him. All this story is just nothing. France wanted to remove the man by all means, and after they did that, they sent him to that court. And the court was honest enough to let justice reign, saying this man has no, we don't see any reason. We don't see what he has done. And he was let to go free. Is this... Otara that France installed that came to Nigeria to push for a war in Niger Republic, saying that he is ready already to send 10,000 soldiers and to finance the operation of his soldiers. Eventually, Nigeria will carry the burden. That is the truth. And then um, what is going to happen? Why is Otara so forward about this? Some of these leaders in West Africa, let us tell ourselves the truth. They do not do the right thing. That's why there's frequent military takeovers. Some, when they go there, they will change the constitution. Instead of two terms, they make themselves to stay for how many terms? And how long is uh, this uh, Watara in Ivory Coast now as a president? It's more than 10 years. 
and they're still going. Anyway, that is um, for Ivory Coast. So basically, P2B is saying that we must also seek to discourage the spread of military dictatorships in West Africa. The recourse to armed deterrence must be retrained by multilateral diplomatic mechanisms. What the situation in Niger urgently calls for is a concerted multilateral coalition of Nigeria, ECOWAS, the AU, and the United Nations towards a programmed return to a democratic constitutional order. In this process, Nigeria's leadership role must not be in any doubt, according to P2B. Very simple. You cannot force the man they have removed back. Many things have gone wrong. It's over weeks now. You don't do that. And the people have threatened that if ECOWAS comes in with the military, they will kill the man. So what are you going to fight for then? What will be the end result? When will you say that we as ECOWAS ECOWAS command have achieved our result? Because the man probably is already dead. So what are you going to do? Kill everybody and how will you determine who will be the next president if they kill this man? Or are you just going to kill the coup leaders? After killing them, there still must be an election to determine whoever will be the president. So this warmongering makes no sense. And finally, I promise you to provide an answer to the question of what happens when the other party isn't ready to sit down and dialogue. And it's very simple. The reason they even don't want to sit down and dialogue is because you started with a threat to them. You Nigeria cut off electricity supply without any single warning or notice. ECOWA said they are going to invade the country without starting with dialogue. So ECOWA has set the tone. You cannot threaten me with military destiny and that uh, attack, and then you ask me to sit down and dialogue. No. But even at that, they still have an opportunity to say, okay, let us put the military threat uh, aside. Let us sit down and dialogue. And that dialogue can still take place. Well, this is um, our latest report on this incident. Please keep uh, um, connecting to our channel and see more on what is happening in Niger Republic. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and see you in our next videos.